Well, welcome everyone. I am delighted to see some faces that I haven't seen in a little while and to see everyone's golden glow from the summer. It's so good to be here with you. Uh, the idea for this short prayer service emerged uh, just a few short weeks ago uh, amidst a growing understanding that these weeks might be a bit challenging for uh, parents and teachers, students and school administrators and boards uh, as fall plans unfold. I know at least one school district is meeting as we are meeting tonight. So we are gathered to Together this evening, very mindful that there are no easy answers and none of the back to school options before us are what we would have chosen. And this feels very heavy and difficult and sometimes impossible. So tonight we bring our prayers and our petitions to God. And if you would like to share a prayer request, please uh, put it in the chat feature. You can send it to Katie if you like and she'll be keeping track of those. And uh, my prayer is that this digital space we create this evening becomes one of comfort and prayer in the midst of so many unknowns. So I invite you to take a deep breath and to catch a glimpse of God's image in some of the faces gathered here with us and to rest in the knowledge that we are in community. And I am going to light this candle. And as I light it, let us be reminded that Christ is gathered here with us too, even in digital space. Friends, let's pray. Dear God, when the rhythm of our days and lives remains broken, and when even the beating of our hearts becomes uneven, it feels as though we've been mired in a time and place it feels impossible to be. What was once a vision of the future is now clouded with the constant refrain of we don't know, or we can't decide, or we seem to hear too, too often, just wait. So God, we gather on this day unfamiliar for us to gather and pray, and yet it is possible, we know, to cast our cares on you. We share the depths of our hearts and we cry out, for this feels impossible to carry on without the surety of work and school. Even as we venture into the gift of each new day, we feel as though we're wandering without making progress, and it feels impossible to navigate this exile. Grandparents miss being hugged by their grandkids. Without ta tag and soccer and friends, it feels impossible to be a kid. And God, it feels risky to be a parent who only wants for their children to have the freedom and for our parents to remain safe and healthy. This impossible middle gnaws at all of our sides. As night falls on our day and the virus shuts down our plans, give us a glimpse of the future. Help us to rise in the morning with the confidence you will rain mana on our tomorrow, smoothing away for impossible to become possible. So God, gather us across time and space and still our anxiety. Soothe our spirits with your presence. And in this place of such vulnerability, wrap your arms around us, lean in and listen. And then fill our souls with the confidence that as you once overcame the impossibility of the grave with the brightness of a new morning, you may fashion our impossibilities into a new tomorrow. We offer up this prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we'll have uh, scripture and poetry from Eden and Robin and Virginia. Okay, so I'm going to start by reading Psalm 23. Can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, can you guys hear me over the cicadas? Okay, I'll be reading a poem called Every Riven Thing by Christian Wyman. God goes belonging to every riven thing he's made. Sing his being simply by being, for sing it is. Stone and tree and sky, man who sees and sings and wonders why, God goes. Belonging to every riven thing he's made means a storm of peace. Think of the atoms inside the stone. Think of the man who sits alone trying to will himself into a stillness where God goes belonging. To every ribbon thing he's made, there is given one shade shaped exactly to the thing itself. Under the tree, a darker tree. Under the man, the only man to see. God goes belonging to every ribbon thing. He's made the thing that brings him near, made the mind, that makes him go, a part of what man knows, apart from what man knows. God goes belonging to every ribbon thing he's made. The peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Thank you for those words um, and the opportunity to reflect on so many ways that God is present with us. So I wanted to begin tonight by going back a little bit to the beginning. Um, right before we sheltered in place, it was the beginning of Lent. And one of the last times that we gathered together was Ash Wednesday. And at our family service, we invited people to reflect on what it means to say, you are dust and to dust you will return. And one of our young people said, what that means is that it's okay to be sad when things you love get broken. And that was so simple and profound that those words have stuck with me. Uh, since March, I don't think a week has gone by that they haven't entered my, my mind. And it's true, so many things that we love have gotten broken. Um, we've experienced dozens of small losses and some major ones too. And I think it's okay to be sad that our children didn't get to enjoy the company of their friends and their teachers at the end of last school year. And that it's okay to be sad that we missed proms and birthday parties and sports and state championships and then summer camps and vacations. It all kind of piled up. And then at church, we had our virtual celebrations of third graders receiving their Bibles and confirmands and even the virtual celebration of our seniors. We are mindful that as we approach this year, there may be more milestones that are celebrated much differently than we would like to imagine that they will be. Um, so many things that we love have gotten broken. And there were bigger losses too. Um, Joe mentioned, you know, hugs from grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins. 
we watch the news and we see the numbers rise and we have wept for loved ones and felt helpless when our friends have lost loved ones and we can't comfort them in the ways that we are used to. And our hearts have been broken for those who've lost paychecks and for food or for children who have lost the security of school where they often had a hot meal and a place of safety. So way back at our Ash Wednesday service, um, when dust seemed a lot more abstract than it does maybe today, we also packed away our alleluias in this basket and covered them up with a black cloth. The idea is that you don't say alleluia during Lent because then when you say it again on Easter morning, it tastes much sweeter on the tongue and we joyfully shout. So there was a time when I hoped that we might be able to unpack these at Easter. And then the days continued to pass and, you know, just things kept happening and I sort of forgot about them until I went back to my office in June and I saw them on my desk. And I wondered if maybe I should just throw them out, but I couldn't bring myself to do that. So here they are at home with me tonight. And perhaps like many of you with so much sadness in March, uh, I too turn to the words of Psalm 23 to find some measure of comfort in the image of God as a shepherd who is with us in the darkest valleys. Um, and maybe holding on to these now kind of dusty alleluias was a way uh, to have some small hope and an acknowledgement of God's goodness and mercy, an act of trust that God will lead us back to green pastures. And so tonight I thought I might unpack these with you. Uh, no, it is not the loud uh, alleluias on Easter morning and the pomp and circumstance isn't there. But throughout this pandemic, I think each of us has also found God's peace and God's joy in some quiet everyday kinds of alleluias. And uh, I asked Greta if she would join me with her voice in uh, raising an alleluia for a few of the abundant ways that God's grace has been revealed to us in this pandemic um, in all kinds of things. Right. Okay. For the new pets that we have welcomed into our homes. You say, alleluia. For babies that have been born. Alleluia. For a slower pace of life. Alleluia for more home-cooked meals around the table. Alleluia. For takeout meals that make weekends seem special. Alleluia. For a glimpse of Comet Neowise. Alleluia. For sidewalk chalk art. Alleluia. For car parades. Alleluia. For long walks to observe nature's wonders. Alleluia. For simple everyday joy. Alleluia. So as I end this reflection, I think that, you know, I want to affirm that yes, it is okay to be sad when things get broken. And yes, it is an act of faith and hope to look for these everyday kinds of alleluias. And my hope is that these simple pleasures remind us that God's goodness and mercy follow us all of our days. And in these things, may we know God's joy. In these things, may we know God's peace. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. So that lit that litany there was so holy and beautiful. I feel like uh, more praying is just a, an act of abundance. But um, we have a few prayer requests. If anybody else has other things they would like me to lift up in prayer, um, you could you could say that, or you could 
um, write it in the chat um, and I'll incorporate it. And I'll pray for each of you by name. I think I have everyone. Greta, Christine, Virginia, Christine, Corey, Joe, Eden, Kristen, Marianne, Marion, Robin, Diana. Uh, let us pray. God, we come to you again and again. We have told you our worries. We have admitted our fears. We have asked you to hold all that is hard. And, uh, and now we ask you to do so again. Let us pile all our worries in a basket and hand them over to you. Let us write down all of our fears on a piece of paper and let them drift into your holy realm. Let us walk our neighborhoods and let our bodies Release into your care the tenderness of our hearts. Give us your presence, O oh God. Give us your mighty hand. Be ever present. Be ever near. Let your healing fall over our country, over our loved ones, over the many nations, over the small, frail bodies we love. Heal and heal and heal, O oh God. For there is no other way out of this than healing. Love and love and love, O oh God. For there is no other way out of this than love. Give wisdom and wisdom and wisdom, O oh God. For there is no other way. Make a way, O oh God. Make a way. Especially for our parents and teachers and students. Be with our students. Give them a bold year of learning, however the way forward. Be with our teachers. Give them what they need to bring knowledge and insight to the communities they serve. Give them energy and imagination and creativity and love. Be with our parents, oh God. Give them patience and strength. Give them forgiveness and a voice that can be heard. Be, O oh God, with our parents and teachers and students. I give you thanks for every person here tonight, for Greta and Christine, for Virginia and Christine, for Corey and Joe, for Eden, and Kristen, for Marianne and Marion, for Robin and Diana. Be a blessing in their midst. Give them courage and inspiration to be who you call them to be in the midst of this time. Bless them, O oh God. And I hand over to you the prayers that they lift up for their children and for their families for their parents, for their livelihoods. Let them hold carefully the concerns of young children. For economic worries and for the home that must sell, God be a blessing. For the waiting, for hope, for trust, O oh God. And I ask that you hold the prayers that are in our hearts tonight. Prayers for peace and prayers for tenderness, prayers for discernment, prayers for community, prayers for belonging, prayers for learning, prayers for connection, prayers for the least of these, Prayers for the lonely, prayers for the kind souls who make a way for joy. Prayers for the people whose deep love and strong voice of reason and wisdom make way for hope. And hear us now as we lift silently our own prayers into your guiding light, O oh God.
and hear us as we pray together the prayer that you teach us saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So um, we will continue to pray for all of you and for, um, for our students and for our schools and for our teachers. Um, and I um, offer a blessing on the night that um, God might go with you into the breeze and into the sweet sound of cicadas, that God might go in, uh, go with you um, into rest, that God might go with you um, into sleep, and that God might be with you as you awaken in the morning. May God's blessing be on each of you now and always. Amen. I'm so grateful for all of you, and we'll see, we'll see you again soon. Peace be with you. Good night. <laughs>